afternoon, everyone, friends, family, honored guests. I'd like to welcome you to the first afternoon of demonstrations for the 25th anniversary of SOHO Study Group of Sogetsu Ikebana. Our first demonstrators today, Tony Hokashi De Stefano and Susan Horyu De Stefano, have been studying Sogetsu Ikebana together for six years. Susan, who's an avid gardener and student of garden design, began studying Ikebana two years prior to Tony, who began his studies upon retiring from the business world in 2017. Tony will demonstrate several large-scale tabletop arrangements. He prefers to source the plant material he uses in his design from their garden. So with that now, please join me in welcoming to the stage Tony Hakashi De Stefano and Susan Horyu De Stefano. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, everybody. I, as Chris said, Susan and I are doing this together. Um, we've been together for a few years now. Fifty. Fifty. <laughs> so pretty since much I, everything. Since high school, don't we have? We're not married for fifty years. Yeah, yeah. Only married for forty years. Um, uh, and Susan is really between the two of us the one who's lived design her whole life. Um, I was more on the other side of my brain, but over the last seven or eight years, under Susan, Susan's guidance, I've really been picking up a, a, an eye and a love for Ikebana. So I'm going to start now. Thank you, ladies. Oh, and our dear friend and classmate, Cora, um, who's going to be assisting us throughout the demonstration. I'll start by presenting four tabletop designs, and then Cora and I will assist Susan to do her finale. Thank you. Okay. So as Chris said, uh, our school of Ikebana uh, is inspired by nature. And for me, nature could be anything. It could be something beautiful in our garden, but it could be something that I've killed in our garden. Um, Susan <laughs> is a very accomplished gardener. Um, I usually manage to keep things alive. But we bought, anybody here ever been to Sonoma Horticultural Nursery? They have rhododendrons, they've got all sorts of great shade loving plants. I think I planted this one in the sun, um, but it's beautiful for Ikebana, as you'll see. <laughs> the other thing that's great about being married to Susan, and Sensei Soho knows this, Susan has an eye for picking out containers. So she's been studying this art for eight years now. I think, like, Within her first month or so, she reached out to Sensei and said, I'd like to buy this container. So this is from Japan, and I'll be using it in my arrangement today. Please. Thank you. And thank you. So as Chris said, we like to, I like in particular to use material from our garden. And when we moved into this house, maybe 20 some odd years ago, Susan immediately began growing, she loves heirloom vegetables, heirloom pumpkins. Unfortunately, this year, the squirrels discovered that they really love heirloom pumpkin blossoms. Good news, Trader Joe's has beautiful pumpkins. <laughs> Yeah, so as I got ready thinking about designs, I learned all sorts of things about the critters that live around our house. So we also grew these pomegranates. These ones are in great shape. I cut a branch early on, a much larger one that I used for a demonstration in class, and I stored it down our basement. I went to get it, and I discovered we have mice in our basement. So that one is gone, but it's been replaced by these, which will do really nicely. And these are dried, so I'm not using any water here. Okay, and these, peonies. So we live in a very cool microclimate where we live, it's down low, and we're blessed with a phenomenal crop of peonies every year. And this winter was so cold that we really had a great crop of peonies. So I like the color of these and the combination of these together with the white pumpkin and the pomegranates, I think really works nicely. And I've got them in tubes because they're, they're, they still want some water at this point. These have got a great green color to them. 
that I love against the pomegranate. Yeah, and the other thing that's wonderful about this, so when you're preparing for a demonstration like this, and when you like to be inspired by the material in your garden, you hope that things are gonna be there when you need them. So the way that I originally conceived of this design, rather than using the, pom the pomegranate, I was gonna use pyracanthus firethorn. We had a beautiful arching branch in the garden. It started with green berries. I check it, I would keep an eye on it. And then one day I went to check it. I guess it was a bird. There were no more berries on my pyracanthus. <laughs> Um, so Susan said, go to the Orinda post office, there's all kinds of pyracanthus, but I thought, that's not who I am, I'm the guy who likes to use stuff from his garden. And then the final touch. And that's our first arrangement. Okay, second one, as I say, now for something completely different. This couldn't be more different from that, but again, it's stuff from the garden. Um, so in this case, uh, Christmas this year was a Christmas of bulbs. Uh, we really like our bulb flowers, and I got Susan close to 200 bulbs. December 26th, the weather was killer for planting bulbs. So most of them were Casablanca lilies, but I wanted to play around because we've, many of us who study Ikebana use giant allium. I wanted to try working with Mount Everest allium. It's a beautiful white allium. The, the flower is about this large, but of course they're gone now, but I got to play with them as they dried. Sensei a few weeks ago gave us a challenge to come up with a, a, a design that was evocative of fireworks. So I thought, gosh, I can use these dried allium in a way to do that. And of course, this is a container that Susan bought because she's got a great eye for this kind of stuff. Uh, Sensei provided us with the wire and it's literally just nestled on top of another Sugetsu frame. And the combination is great for holding on to these dried allium. So nothing in nature looks like this. They've been spray painted all kinds of different colors. And you can see the burst of the allium is evocative of that burst that you get on fireworks. And particularly when we match the colors together, it really kind of works. Okay, that's our base with purple. And again, you can see some of these are amazingly big. And when they're in bloom, you've got flowers coming out of them, so they're really large. Okay, onto the gold. The challenge with these is when you get the heads against one another, they interlock. And when you separate them, you get a mess.
OK, now we get to have some fun. So more spray paint. Um, since they gave us, gave us this plant material, I forgot to look it up. But uh, when we put it outside, I'll put a, a description of what this is. Sp dried and spray painted gold. Again, it gives you a sense of the bursting fireworks. This is not for the faint of heart. Blue night sky. And my favorite. So Agapanthus, um, we've got them growing all over the garden. This one took this weird bend and I used it when it was live in class. And then I thought, this kind of gives you the sense of this one firework bursting off to the side. You know, it might have been a dud, but there it is. That's our second arrangement. OK, so you'll see so far, um, I haven't really been cutting and preparing the plant material that I'm working with. Because the peony leaves are in tubes, this is all dried. But what I'll be doing next, I'll be cutting and trying to make sure that this material doesn't wilt while it's sitting outside for your enjoyment. So phenomenal container. Um, I realized as I was preparing for this, with the exception of the container that Susan's going to use, she bought all of these. <laughs> what a surprise. OK, ladies. That's great. So from the garden, these will be gone next week. <laughs> uh, these are dogwood leaves in various shades of red and green. And this is a phenomenal viburnum branch. So one of the things that Sensei has taught us that forever, but for me just for the last six years, is that plants have got a natural orientation toward them. They think about where the sun is, and they grow toward the sun. So as I, as I fill this container, I'll be thinking about the natural flow of the material that I'm using. And these like to lean this way. These are more straight back to you. Off to my right. And then, as you might have guessed, the one thing that we didn't grow in our garden that we went to the flower market for are these phenomenal orchids. Oh well, maybe someday.
So one of the things I love about this container is that it looks great all around. So it probably looks pretty nice as you're looking at it now, but it also looks wonderful like this. And that is our third arrangement. Okay, so the last one, um, I, you know, again, it's material from the garden. Um, so anybody here grow dahlias? A few of us. Good year for dahlias, bad year for dahlias? Eh. Yeah, a lot of people have told me that they've had trouble with their dahlias this year. Um, we got really lucky. Thank you. So one of our classmates, Gordon Ward, who's incredibly talented, um, was, I'll call it deaccessioning some of his material. You could call it throwing out. Um, <laughs> um, and I was the beneficiary of Gordon's generosity with this incredible branch. And back to the dahlias, I picked this last night. This is like, this is like the last dahlia. <laughs> More of our friendly peony leaves. Aren't these amazing? And I love, so in our garden, the dahlias grow right by, you know, it's a different time of year, the peonies. So I love that in the garden, it almost looks like this because the dahlias are there right amidst the peony leaves. A little bit of water because I'll be carrying this later, but we'll put more water in when we put it on display. And it looks beautiful. The reflection of the dahlia and the leaves and the branch in the water is incredible. And that is my final arrangement. So now Susan's gonna come on stage and pour, and I will assist Susan. Is your okay? Yeah, that's great. A dear friend of ours uh, found this container. I did not buy it. Uh, he found it at an estate sale in San Francisco. Oh yeah, so we're the beneficiaries of it and I've been using it many times. So this is a eucalyptus branch. And this is called spider's gum. I Googled it, I didn't know. So my husband and I, we take private lessons with Soho and after, after a, a class we like to go and have lunch. So we were in Hercules one day and we were going on a little hike and we saw a big eucalyptus tree that had fallen. And so um, I said, Tony, do you think maybe we could break off a couple of branches? And he says, <laughs> okay, I did. Isn't this a pretty color? This is a protea. It's a beautiful chartreuse color. Kind of like your jacket. Oh, hi, Tom. I know you. I just thought I'd add this for a pop of color. And then some in the back to kind of a little peek here, let me see. I was talking to Rachel backstage and uh, she called material like this Ikebana roadkill <laughs> 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 because we basically find things on the side of the road. 
We're always ready with, the, with pruners in our cars. Now these are, these are orchids obviously, and because I don't have water in here, I put these tubes on here, and you can buy these at the flower market, but I think you can also get it at uh, McDonald's, at, no, not McDonald's, at Michael's. So funny story, I went to the San Francisco flower market on Thursday. I placed an order for orchids, a, a bouquet of orchids. And that's usually like $65. And he said, I have some bad news, Susan. I said, oh, oh, what? He says, they didn't come in this week. So he says, you can have last week's for half price. I said, oh no, I need it for a flower uh, arrangement um, de uh, demonstration. And I said, do you know Soho Sakai? He says, oh yes. As a matter of fact, why don't you take these two bunches for free? <laughs> <laughs> Use that name. <laughs> These are monstera leaves, aren't they beautiful? Very tropical. Thank you, Cora. And that's my design. Thank you.